Hello again everybody and welcome to mission 2 of the Cold War Warrior Campaign in the Super War 25 and I'm going to get to the briefing here in just a second. I'm up right now just trying to work on some techniques to get more firepower into the target on one pass and I'm experimenting with cluster bombs now. I'm uh, using some of the ripple uh, settings for uh, just find, trying to find a good interval to release these bombs at so that I can get a lot more firepower in on the target. So I'm set up for a sort of a pop-up offset attack, and you'll see this on one of the On the Range videos. But I'm just going to come in and do what I have in mind for this next mission. Okay, and coming back around set up on the target, I am at low level. I'm just going to, once I uh, reach a good point, and this looks good right here, I'm going to pop up, roll in on the target, enable the laser range finder, release the weapons, Disable the laser range finder and get out of the area. So pop up, apex, pull for the target. Okay, got these more or less in line like I wanted. Laser range finder on. Okay, I've got to work on the uh, the pull out there. Okay, release. Both bombs off. Let me pull up so I don't fly into the frag. Off left. Let's see how this does. Okay, I've got to work on that a little bit. So that's the basic idea. I don't know if I'm going to go with two CBUs or four on this mission. But it's just going to be one pass. It has to be one pass, or otherwise I'm not going to survive it. And the mission designer, Imbot, made a great point on a, a forum post on Eagle Dynamics that even though you don't get the feedback and the visual indication of a smoking vehicle on a lot of missions, that doesn't mean that you're not accomplishing the mission. I mean, it's you're putting a lot of munitions onto a column of vehicles, and you're not seeing the damage that's done, you know, both physically to the vehicles and psychologically to the crews. So, even though you don't get that feedback that we're so used to as flight simmers, uh, you are still accomplishing the mission. And I just gotta get that into my head, even though I don't see those smoking vehicles out there, those smoking wrecks that we always are used to seeing, that doesn't mean that I'm not doing everything that I can, that doesn't mean that it's not a successful mission. So, let me go ahead and get into the briefing, and we'll get this thing started and see how this goes. And here we are at the briefing, so let's go through this and see what we're in for. The situation is that it's the 20th December 1989, so it's later in the afternoon, right after we flew that first mission. The West German 12th Panzer Division continues to advance against Maykop, with the 35th Panzer Brigade having crossed the Kuban River early this afternoon. The 4th Mechanized Rifle Regiment of the 16th Guards Tank Division, that's on our side, is engaging the enemy and in delaying actions and pulls back towards Maykop. The West German 5th Panzer Division is moving down the rostov Krasnodar Highway, led by the 15th Panzer Brigade, engaging elements of the 42nd Guards Tank Division. So just to break that down a little bit using the map here. Okay, in our sector, the one that we've been dealing with on these first two missions, this is the NATO 12th Panzer Brigade coming up against our uh, 16th Guards Tank Division. So we're going to be operating right up here. They're coming down towards Maykop, that's right here. And also in the western sector that we haven't actually flown a mission in yet, we had the, like it said, the 5th Panzer Division coming down against our uh, 42nd Guards Tank Division. So that's the situation. So they're just coming south towards Maykop, and we're trying to halt them as best we can. Now my objective, specifically on this mission, the West German Panzer Artillery Battalion 355 has been observed operating in the rear area of the 35th Panzer Brigade. High Command is tasked to strike package against this artillery battalion. The package departs the rendezvous point at 1720, time on target 1727. The target strike a M109 artillery battery of the West German Panzer Artillery Battalion 355 in row column formation. So it's looking very similar to the last mission. And we're going to be slightly behind the lines. I think a lot more behind their lines than we were the last time. Now, looking at the waypoints and the timing on this mission, it's going to be almost an identical setup package-wise and waypoint and timing-wise. So, 1705 takeoff, that's going to be late afternoon for this type of time of year in this part of the world. So, I don't think that visibility is going to be an issue. It might be just getting to dusk as we land, but there should be plenty of illumination to make this happen. And package elements, same exact setup as last time with one small exception. Uh, we do have Grotch, that's three flights of Sukhoi 25s. I'm Grotch 3. We have Hunter 1 and 2, MiG-23s providing a fighter sweep, and we have Wolf 1 this time, suppression of enemy air defenses, with 2 by Sukhoi 17 fitters. Now threats in the area. We of course have the same Hawk batteries that we were up against last time. 
We, in addition, have Stinger man pads, man portable air defense systems, shoulder mounted IR guided SAMs that just the uh, the guys up here I would expect in the uh, 35th Panzer, uh, Panzer Brigade will have on them. So, as we overfly them into the target area, I'm expecting this to be a little bit hairy when it comes to the short range IR guided SAM threat this time around. And you'll see what I mean once we get into the mission planner. Now, we also have, of course, the Roland SAM and the uh, Japar AAA, just like last time. Expected fighter opposition is uh, the same as last time, 6x F4Es of the uh, German Luftwaffe. Weather, I uh, don't expect to be a factor, and of course, takeoff time is 1700. So let's go to the mission planner and look at this in a little bit more detail. Now, let's zoom into the target area and see what intel tells us we can expect. Now, we have the, the NATO front lines right here, moving south towards Makop. And our strike is going to be against a column of artillery on the road. Now, the artillery has transports and, of course, the M109 uh, Paladin batteries themselves. But in addition, we're expecting uh, uh, Stinger Mad Pads, like I mentioned before, right here in this area. So, use of flare as I'm going in here and taking these guys out is going to be essential. I'm not so worried about after I put some fire into this location. That should at least keep their heads down and keep them from firing back at me after that. It's that first roll in and first attack on this area. Whoever that is, whether it's me, whether it's my wingman or another flight in the area, that's a, a pretty well defended location right there. Not to mention everything that we have around it as far as the Jepard AAA and I'm sure there's a Roland up here somewhere or uh, it might not even be on the map, but I would expect a very warm welcome once we start to get into this area and employ weapons on this target. That's why I want to make this one pass. What I'm going to do is try to set this up offset to the known threats. So come up here. Maybe I'll use this line right here. Come in just along the, the shoreline of this uh, water feature. Uh, then turn northeast, intersect this road, and then roll in, dropping my bombs along the line. Uh, break off either right or left. It's not really going to matter. I'll try for left just to uh, stay away from the rest of the known threats up here to the north and then egress the area the same way that I came and then back out over our lines. So one pass, take out this column, <laughs> egress, and get out of there. So that's the plan at least. Now let me have a look at the loadout and show you what I'm going to be taking up. Now on the last mission, I ran out of fuel. There's <laughs> no two ways about it. I didn't have enough to get back to base. I diverted to Makop. But since the NATO forces are advancing on MAKOP, I'm not going to count on that being a, a divert option for this mission or probably for the rest of the mission. So I need to ensure that one way or another, I'm going to have enough fuel to make it back to base. So I'm taking up, of course, uh, two 800 liters uh, fuel tanks, external fuel tanks. And I'm taking up a, a way, way lighter load this time. I've only got two 500 kilogram CBUs, the same type that you saw me release during the first part of this video. So it's going to be one pass, dropping two CBU using that same technique I used before. I'm not going to have anything out on the wings. Now this might be actually a little bit overkill in the opposite direction. I might end up landing with plenty of fuel to spare and wish that I had a little bit more firepower. Maybe next time I'll be able to take up four bombs instead of two. But it's still the early phases of this. I'm still feeling out the Sukhoi 25 and getting a an idea of how it's going to perform flying it the way that I fly it, the techniques that I use when I'm in the target area and the altitudes and airspeeds that I need to use to make the timing and that I like to use uh, in general when I'm employing the aircraft. So, so we'll see how this does and of course I'm sure it will change next time around but this is the plan. Now one other thing that occurs to me as I sit here and continue to go through the minutia that I always do off camera before I fly one of these, but I would not want to go up against Mbot, the mission designer in this campaign, in any kind of a war game situation, because let's look at what's going on here early in this campaign. Why MAKOP? Why would the uh, 12th Panzer Division be going for MAKOP? And it has to do with communications and supply. MAKOP is kind of the last stop along this rail line, it's kind of the branch line coming off of the main Krasnodar Mozdok rail line you, you see up, up here and goes you know, way out to the east. but if they take MACOP, the 42nd Division is completely cut off from supply from the land to the east, and the 16th Division would have one, or, one of two options. One would be to retreat to the east and defend that line of communication. That would leave the 42nd Division completely cut off. The other option would be for the 16th to 
retreat to the south down to the coast and pull back into Georgia. That would again either leave the 42nd Division cut off or force the 42nd Division to retreat with them and leave that entire army isolated behind the Caucasus. So the best case scenario if Maycott falls is that we'll have one division defending that line of communication to the east and we're just going to either lose the 42nd Division due to attrition or they're going to be out of the picture anyway because they're on the other side of the Caucasus and cannot support in one way, shape, or form. That's the best case. Worst case is we just completely lose these two divisions south of the Caucasus and open up the entire area up here into the, uh, into the Caspian area and all the stands to the NATO forces. So yeah, Makov is extremely important in this situation and brilliant move by, uh, by the mission designer to have that as the focus. So, okay, let's go ahead and get into the air and get this thing rolling. Okay, picking up starting from a has today, so no time to lose. I'm going to go ahead and go uh, right shift L, get power on the aircraft, right control home. Okay, clear four and aft on two. Let's get number two up and running and get taxi. Three, four, two for 250, 5,000 flanking. So same air picture as we had last mission, I'm sure. One thing I am doing different on this one is I have a English language cockpit mod installed, so I'll be able to actually read some of the instruments and tell what all this stuff is on the uh, caution and warning panel. I have the start cycle, start RE, or uh, I guess the uh, start light for the right engine illuminated. That'll go out once I'm up and running. Okay, so good RPMs, good temperatures. Let me go right, alt, home for number one. Okay, there goes somebody taxiing as we speak. Let me just kind of watch what this guy does. Does he go left or right? I have no idea where I'm at on the airfield. Okay, clear for startup 331 at 2 meters per second. Okay, so I need to go left after I taxi out. I think I just, yeah, I know generally where the hazards are on this airfield, so I just need to follow that around. Okay, so I've got the AWACS aircraft up, illuminating. Hopefully, he stays on station for me. Okay, good RPMs. Good temperature stabilizing and start cycle light out. And no time to lose, let's go ahead and taxi. So, Sochi, request taxi. Okay, canopy, that is, <laughs> I think, right, look, control C. Yes. Runway 24, same runway as last time. Okay, so let's take it on out. Okay, two's on the taxi as well. Kind of close quarters in here. I wonder how much wingtip clearance I have. Oh, plenty. Okay, out here and to the left. Okay, yeah, there's the runway. That's awesome. That's going to help out a lot on timing as well. Okay, coming up on the taxiway, left hand turn. Okay, let me turn down the. a little bit. Uh, touch more. Okay, that's fine. I really, really do need to be able to hear that. I know it it can get uh, a bit tedious if you're listening. But, yeah, let me know if that's just too overpowering for you. I know that it sounds different over different speaker combinations. And, like, right now I've got a pretty dark, high-quality headset that I use. So, it might sound different on, uh, on your setup. I, I don't know, for better or worse. Okay, there goes that guy. And just checking on timing. Uh, let's see. Let me go to my briefing one more time and just double-check my timing here. Okay, 705 takeoff, 600 KPH, 720 rendezvous. So, I've got about three more minutes. Okay, 344 for 200 at 4,000 hot. So, no time to lose. Let me go ahead and get myself organized here. I'll go flaps to the intermediate position. And this was a little bit of a mistake I made last time was that I had the flaps full down for the, uh, the takeoff. Whereas I needed them in the intermediate position. I've got the wrong indications on my flap indicator for some reason. It's showing me they're full down. I know that's not right. Okay, let me go full up. Yeah, they're just not working at all, are they? Maybe it has something to do with that cockpit mod that I have. I'm going to take it that that's in the intermediate position. The reason I did it in the full down position before was that that's how it's, that's what it said in the manual. It said it was the takeoff and landing position. But, um, Okay, anyway, let's go ahead and get out to the runway and get airborne. So, 8-5. Go 
Got another minute to spare, but yeah, I'd rather be ahead of the game this time. Sochi, request takeoff. Okay, so I'll just line on the runway. Where's my wingman at? I know I heard him taxiing. That'd be the contrails, probably off of the... Maybe off the AWACS aircraft? So where is two? There's two. Coming on out. Okay, I'll get airborne. Two will follow, so let me go ahead and push it on up. Uh, okay, 70%. I'll just make a, a quick check. Okay, brakes release. Everything's still looking just fine, so let's go ahead and push it up. Full power, and I'm going to rotate about 200 this time around. But bouncing around more than I did last time. Okay, 150, 175. Okay, 200, rotate. Okay, maybe I should have waited to rotate a little bit more. Okay. Airborne, let's go gear up. And I'll wait on the flaps. I'm not sure what's up with the flaps, to be honest. I think that's why it was a little weird on the takeoff there. Maybe... I don't know. Let me pop to an external view real quick and see what's going on there. Okay, pop up through 349 for 190. So, yeah, okay, I've got my flaps up now, so, yeah, no sweat. Okay, so let's go ahead and get out to the target area, get on this rendezvous, and see what we can make happen here.